the Lord. First King 13, the old prophet answered. The old prophet answered. He answered and he said, wait a minute. I'm a prophet too. Where all the prophets at? Mm. Just blink your eyes. One thing about a prophet, you have to understand, you know them by their fruit. Prophet liars don't have fruit. You really going to do this to me today, God? Yeah, yeah. Prophet liars don't have fruit. They don't. There's no manifested evidence found in them. They just, they just don't have any fruit. Prophesying, that means people, when they see prophets such as myself, they want a word right now. Right now. And there are times where God will release a word right now. But there are times where God will release a word for a season. Mm -hmm. I had a young man that the Lord gave me a word from him. And he immediately packed up his family and moved to a land in Georgia with no job. No place to stay. And in his car. I gave the word. He moved quickly. I didn't say quickly. He good now. But when a prophet gives you a word, wait. Because he establishes his word out of two or three witnesses. Right? So when God tells you something, just hold on, wait. Prophets come to warn, correct, and comfort. And everybody wants the comforting word. But they don't want the warning. They don't want the correction. Here at Unity Church, you're going to get it, whether you like it or not. Most people that are no longer here is because they did not heed the word of what God gave them. And they didn't want to seize it. You can abort a promise. Thank you, Iris. I want to give everybody assignment. I want y'all to re look. Everybody home, you ain't going nowhere. I want you to watch the movie Drumline. Hold on, Nick. This ain't your segment of the ministry. The reason I want you to watch Drumline is because he had a gift, but his character was nasty. <laughs> and you can have a gift, and your character could be nasty and mess up what God promised you. His promises are yes and amen. That's why he got to put you through the process so you know what to do with the promise. I don't care. You will never be nasty and represent me in my church. Your gift will take you places your character can't sustain you. Now back to the message. He said, I, he said, apostle said, that's the message. Okay. He said, well, I'm a prophet too. Watch this. It's going to make sense. And the angel sent me to you with the word of the Lord. He said, bring him back with you to your house so that you can eat and you can drink. But he was lying to the man of God. So he was a prophet. God gave an assignment. He said, leave here and don't you look back. He said this. He said, leave and don't come back. So the prophet says, well, where you at? I'm going to find him. I'm a prophet too. Come to my house. So basically what he was saying is disobey God. Okay. Missy ain't got no time for no tears. He was, he was lying. So the man of God returned with him and he ate and he drunk. While he was sitting there at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who brought the prophet back. He was crying out to the man of God. He said, who came from Judah? You? He said, I'm going to tell you what thus said the Lord now. Now? I'm going to tell you what thus said the Lord. Now, because you were here, let me break it down simplest. You have defiled the word of the Lord. And you have not kept the commandment that he gave you. Where all of my disobedient folks at? This is your segment. God told you to do something and you still ain't did it. And you want to know why your life is going to hell in a handbasket. 
I want to speak to the nation at large that listen to me now. Hold on, Missy, where you going? Don't walk away. Somebody give a tissue. I want to speak to those under the sound of my voice because this nation said we ain't need God. Mm -hmm. I bet we need him now. I want to speak to those under the sound of my voice in my car. God told you to pack a box and move and you still ain't move. I, I want to speak to those under the sound of my voice uh, that God told you to do something. You still got confirmation three different ways and you still struggling with it. Huh. Well, I guess the tissue ministry need to go outside because the Lord says, you are disobedient and why haven't you followed my commandment? You came back and you ate bread and you drunk when I told you not to. I told you to leave this place and you did it anyway. Well, therefore, your body, this is the consequences. Your consequences will be your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. When the Lord of, when the word of God came, and this man finished eating and drinking. The prophet who brought him back sat on a donkey. And he went out on his way, leaving. And a lion met him and killed him. And the body was left lying on the road. Both the donkey and the lion were standing by. And the Lord had a blessing to the reading of the word. If you would allow me to tell you this. Listen to your ears. So your feet won't follow. Listen to your ears. So your feet won't follow. Or you can say watch your ears. So your feet won't follow. Many of us get in trouble. Because we are listening to the wrong person. Many of us get in trouble because God told you to do something. And because you don't like what God told you to do, you do what you want to do. Many of you, under the sound of my voice, God told you and he confirmed the word of God through you. But you didn't like that response. Now you want to know what's going on in your life, please. God already told you what to do. Most of you, under the sound of my voice, why am I saying watch your ears? Because your ears is what you listen to that gives you the command to move. God said my sheep know my voice And a stranger they shall not follow The man of God follow I've got to go a little bit deeper here, Apostle. Because the word of God said that a prophet came to him Hear me, he was indeed a prophet But you know, people want what they want when they want it God has said to me as I begin to study this word huh, Even the people around you You've got to be careful in the season When God is telling you what to do huh? Folks don't want you to get free huh? Folks don't want you to get blessed huh? They can't stand what God is doing huh? And so they're in their own flesh There is no good thing in the flesh God told him, he said, listen here He said, what I need you to do is leave this place quickly Leave now Don't look back, move forward huh? Don't go left, don't go right, move forward huh? Why are y'all looking at me like that? Huh? God told you to move huh? And you're still there huh? God told you to relocate huh? And you still there huh? If you don't do what God said Well, hold on baby, we've been friends for a long time I really don't want you to leave Because huh, we've been good, good friends and I, I'm worried about you and I, maybe that's not the wrong thing to do huh? but God said I told you what to do huh? well I don't think that I should huh? it's funny because folks will talk you out of a blessing huh? it's funny because folks see what God is doing huh? but yet still instead of saying you better do what God said huh? they say no it ain't convenient for me huh? folks hold on it's funny, Travis D, because uh, God gave him the instructions. Uh, I've got to ask you a question. Huh? Why do we have a problem following the... Cons he said, if you love me, oh, y'all know it, but why don't we do it? Uh, we do everything contrary to the word of God, uh, but yet and still, we say, God bless us. Uh, did you know that the first thing that God told Moses to do is go? Moses looked around at all he had. He looked at the splendor and the glory of God. He looked around and he looked at his lineage. But yet still something kept calling him. He looked around at how he used to live. Do you know when God called him? He ran and he didn't go back until God said it was time. God says, listen here. It's your season. It's your time. And folks is mad and trying to talk you out of it. Hold on. I am a prophet, he said. 
if, if you are a prophet, how am I in this mess? Watch this. You're in this mess because you allow someone huh, to talk you out of. Read the word of God. He said, because he defiled. Which simply means God will tell you to do something, Lord Renee. And if Travis talk you out of it, Travis ain't in trouble. Travis is not in trouble. The word of God said that you defile. God said, if I tell you to do something, I love Harpo's. God knows I do. But I can't it there. Oh, we're going to have fun with this. And God is saying, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And God said, why did you defile what I told you to do? God said to switch your doctor. He said, switch your doctor. He said it. But you keep going back because that's the child. Look, that's the doctor I've been going to for four years. God is saying, you get ready to wake up and you ain't going to have no job. And you trying to stay. God will tell you to do stuff that's simple. He said, don't eat. Don't drink. Just go. And he could not do that. I said, okay, God. Now, um, why is it that... Um, this man could not follow simple instruction. Watch this. He could not follow simple instructions because his desire was calling. He said, don't eat, don't drink. Which indicates there was a level of him on his journey that he was hungry. Most of us keep defiling and disobeying God because our desire is we want what we want. And God says, move, but you say, I'm comfortable. God says, don't do that, but I like it. God says, move here, and you're like, mm, it's too much work. His desire was calling, so when he spoke the desire... And he masked himself. He began to move according to his flesh. Watch this. Dash thy fit up against the stone. If you be God, jump. The angels in heaven will take flight and save you. The enemy will always speak to your desire to go against the will of God. See, when I speak to people when they say, well, I got a soul tie. I cannot get free from the soul's high. I've got to dig to the root of the thing and say, well, what are you so connected to? What do you like about the person? What do you love? Why do you keep going back? Because it's that one desire that calls you to the place where you say, even though it's bad for me, I'll keep staying in it. It's that pull. It's the pull. And God is saying, can you please Watch your ears. Sometimes in your season, you got to just not speak. You can't say nothing. I know what y'all see, but y'all really don't know. Just wait. Have you ever told somebody something you saw or you said it? Hear me. Uh, I have to do something. I know it's six feet social distancing, but come here, Tamika. What about Baba Shad? When God says to watch your ears because your feet follows.
he's saying to me. He said that the spirit of the Lord is going to fall. And during this season, he needs you, please, to watch your ears. Your ears is what people are putting in to impregnate your spirit with stuff. You can either abort it or birth it. God said, in this season, watch your ears. Because God is speaking. Oh God, you got to be careful what folks say to you. You got to be careful what the news people bring to you. You got to be careful of the gossip and the rumor. Because folks is looking at themselves. He was looking himself and saying I want what I want. He said I'm a prophet but he lied to get him to a place of death and folks is talking to you simply to kill you. You don't get it do you? Watch your ears. Your feet will follow what you hear. God will say it's time to move and the devil will talk you out of it. The word of God says speaking. Get violent about your promise and tell folks I can't receive this. I can't hear you because God gave me instructions and I got to follow through with the promises of God. I can't hear you because my God said my sheep know my voice and my strength they shall not follow I watch my ears so my feet won't follow cause I'm carrying the promises of God finish it for me baby hallelujah come on shout and give God some glory watch your ears because your feet will follow. Watch your ears. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord for my beautiful fiance. Come on. Your pastor, the apostle. Oh, you can do better than that. There's something very critical. something very critical because the prophet was able to persuade the other prophet because his desires were out of whack sometimes you want something so bad that you're willing to do something illegitimate or illegal in the spirit to get it but the Lord says in this season you got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He says, amen, that you got to be subject to the leaders. Good God Almighty that he has called for you. He said you ain't going to be able to steal a place, steal a position. Good God Almighty. If a prophet outside of this house told you you were going to be something, but you never got it in the inside of this house, it's not a confirmation. Glory to God. Somebody say it's critical. It's critical. This is what the Bible says. Glory to God. Amen. 13, four, number 13, 4 and 5. Amen. 1 Kings 13, 4 and 5. I want to read this for you quickly. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth against the man of God, it dried up so that he could not put it again to himself. And the altar also was rent and the ashes poured out of the altar according to the sign which the man of God he had given him from the word of the Lord. This is what's it's critical. This is what's critical. Help me out, Corey. What's, what's critical is, amen, just because you were able to do the assignment doesn't mean that the assignment is up. You need to know this. This is the word of the Lord. Hebrews 10, 36, it says, For ye have need of patience after ye have done the will of God that ye might receive the promise. 
See, he went to Bethel. He prophesied against the altar. He prophesied against Jeroboam. The power of God fell. The fear of God fell. But what happened after that was he thought he was through. Sometimes after you sing, you think you're through. Sometimes after you pray, you think you're through. Sometimes after you prophesy, you think you're through. But he wasn't through yet because he gave him a command. He told him to go to Bethel. The word Bethel means the house of the Lord. He says, go to Bethel. He says, when you go to Bethel, he says, when you get there, prophesy against Jeroboam. He says, don't eat there. He says, don't drink there. He says, don't take anything from them. He says, leave from there and go back to where I told you to go. I asked somebody, are you obedient? Are you obedient? Are you? Are you, are you, are you trying to do your own thing? Is your gift bigger than you? Is your gift bigger than you? Is your voice bigger than you? Is your talent bigger than you? Or is the character of God bigger than you? He says you got a need of patience because your gift running before you. You got you got need of patience because your word running before you. You laid hands on somebody and they recovered and now you're ready to start your own church. Good God Almighty. You was able to get a prayer through and somebody got healed and now you think you're ready. He said you got need of patience. Patience, patience. Patience defined as enduring consistency and continuance with cheerfulness. It means that just because you're here don't mean you're happy. He said, just because you're here don't mean I feel the devil. I can feel the devil. He's mad with me now. He said, just because you're here doesn't mean, amen, that you're really happy about where God has you. Why? Because you want to be exalted before time. But God said, don't be like the prophet that ran and did the work but did not get the promise. Are you in this house? He says, enduring with consistency and continuous with cheerfulness. Having the capacity to, watch this, to accept or tolerate delay. Can you tolerate delay? Can you wait on what God really wants to do for you? Do you got the time? I, I, I'm feeling something right now. Can, can you accept the trouble that's going to come with it? The suffering that's going to, because just because you're doing the assignment doesn't mean you ain't going to get no trouble. You got to be willing to go through some delay. You got to be willing to be tried. I mean, after you done done it, after you done sung, after you done prayed, after you done fasted, after you done served, after somebody done cussed you out, after somebody done talked to your own, are you ready, are you? We're not really ready to be patient, baby. I don't, I don't think they're really patient. Because they think we just jumped together. They don't understand the suffering that we went through. Somebody thinks something magical. That's magical about them. No, baby, we was catching hell for years. Ask somebody, do you really have patience? Are you really patient? Some of y'all said, yes, let's see, let's see. The etymology, the etymology of the word patience is patient. Patient, as in a hospital, patient. A patient is any recipient that is ill or injured and in need of treatment by a physician, nurse, or psychologist. I think that our gifts sometimes makes us forget that we need the physician. Because somehow we think that we're fully healed because we're operating. God told me I didn't know. 
I had this hoopty. And every time I got ready to get into it, amen, it was a 79 Corolla. And sometimes it had a stick in it. And what i do when I wanted to crank it because the starter was broken in it, I'd push that choker for a little while, jump in it. You know what I'm talking about, Carlo. Pop the clutch and it'll start working. It got me from A to B, but it wasn't working right. I want you to know just because you can pop the clutch in your gift to work doesn't mean that God is actually pleased with you. I need somebody to know that you ain't nothing but a frying pan. What he'll do is take some oil and put some oil on you. Grease you up like a turkey. Good God of mine, you fry you up and use you to fill somebody up but still just put you away when it's time. Get thee away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never... You got to realize being patient, amen, is being that I'm able to endure. Suffering as a good soldier. How many good soldiers we have in here? He said in order for you, for you to go where I want you to go and you got to be able to be a patient. You just can't be patient. You got to be you got to be willing because somehow you became perfected in your own mind. He says somewhere along the way, you became perfected. The old prophet messed up because he didn't know he was still sick. The old prophet messed up because he went to Jeroboam and, and he went and prophesied and he was the big man at that time. He was the one that gifts stood up. And because, amen, he left there, you got to watch pride because your gift will put pride in your heart and make you think that you're something that you're not. I believe, amen, the old prophet was able to persuade the other prophet because something wasn't right in his heart and in his desire. He said, you know what? I done already did the work. I can go get me something to eat. He forgot what God said. I need to ask somebody, did you forget what God said when you came to unity? Or did something else stand up in you? Did you, did you forget what God said? Because he gave you some instructions when you got here. He told you what to do when you got here. You that are out there, glory to God, that are looking at me by the way of streaming, did you forget what the Lord said? Let me shut this down. Somebody say he did what he was supposed to do. The man of God finished his assignment. He rebuked Jeroboam. He prophesied against the altar. The fear of God was used. But what he wasn't ready for there was still something broken in the inside of him. I want to tell y'all something. You need to be afraid of your gift. The most fearful scripture it is, is when he says, get thee away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Hold up, God. I prophesied. I, 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 I prophesied in thy name. I, 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 I laid hands. I, I did all these things. I gave you my life. But something in you became fulfilled by what you were given and you didn't belong to me anymore. Something in you. You became a king in your own right. You became the queen in your own right. And instead of me being on the altar of your heart, you took the altar. So you became the idol. Your gift became the idol. Some of you are said, I can go anywhere and preach. And I can go anywhere and sing. And I can go anywhere. But I beg to differ. God gives you an assignment. And wherever he gives you the assignment at, you got to go suffer there until the assignment up. Sometimes you got to be cussed out. Sometimes you got to be broke down. But you won't prophesy a lick. You won't sing a lick. You won't evangelize until God agrees. Come here, baby. Stand with me. I need to, I want to close on this note. Leaders, you need to be patient. Remember that God is the great physician. This is who God gave you. I'm coming in with her. I'm joining her. She'll become my wife. But God, she says, this is your pastor. 
and some of you have not held her in the esteem that she was supposed to be because you thought that you had something that she had and I need to tell somebody around here you're nothing like this you don't have a gift like that God didn't bring you here so you can become her she is significant by herself and if you want some oil off of her what you got to come do is you got to kneel See, but this is what they don't want to do, baby. They don't want to kneel to get the oil. <laughs> Tell somebody you got to kneel to get the oil. You got to humble yourself to get the oil. <laughs> so this is, this is, this is, this is it. Don't do what the old prophet did because he lost his inheritance. In those days, they only wanted to die in the same place where their father was buried. Tell somebody, don't die with a lie. So what the other prophet that led him astray did, after he was killed, the lying prophet went and got his body. He said, bury him with me. Somebody, and I need, I need you to hear this because you're listening to the wrong people. They see you in position to do something great. They see that your gift is higher than theirs. And they see that they have a persuasion. So they say, I don't want her to go higher than me. I don't want her to make a connection I didn't make. So they whisper in your ears and say things that the devil has given them. Are you hearing me? And just because I ain't point you out don't mean I ain't prophesying. <laughs> he says, he's dead now. I want to be buried with him. And there's somebody that wants you to die with them. I got to say something and I'm going to have to put this down. If you try to gather a church out of here, you're going to get cursed. If you think that you're going to build a house out of this house, a curse will be on everything you do. I guarantee you, you won't get over 10 people. And those people will be poverty stricken. You won't be able to pay for a building. You won't be, I, I got it. I'm, am I all right? You won't be able to pay for a building. You won't be able to pay for a garden. Matter of fact, your whole house will go down. The warning from the Lord today is, as leaders and as people of God, Follow him with all diligence. Keep your heart. Humble yourselves up under the mighty hand of God. Repent to your leaders so that you can be healed. And allow God to do what he wants to do. Come on somebody, praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. We thank God for the word. One thing about having a prophetic mandate, prophets come to warn, correct, and comfort. And the Lord said the warning shall be in this house as well as your house. Do what God told you to do. Don't override the voice of God. Go through the process. Don't go around the process. Don't try to go under the process. Go through the process. The process is difficult. A lot of people don't understand that they see everything that you're doing in your life. And they don't understand that you went through something to get there. Let God exalt you in due time. In due time. In due time. In due time. And so I thank God for the word and the warning that came to this house as well as yours. I say those that are looking at me do what God told you to do go through the process and don't take a shortcut amen really quickly we get ready to lift our offering and we're going to leave here we're going to ask those of you under the sound of my voice my offering today my offering in my house I'm going to start my offering off with $300 those of you online that can follow me with $100 do so 
The Lord has already petitioned us to get out of this building. He has already petitioned us to move from this place. And one thing that I do is I always follow the voice of the Lord. I am asking you if you're online to start off your offering with $100. All you tithe payers, I love you. And those of you who don't have, I always say this. Would you please get up an hour early from the time you normally get up and give God an hour of worship? You can go on Giveify if you like. You can send the correspondence through the P.O. box, and you can go to Unity Church, Charlotte, nt.org, and you can sow there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm looking at everyone that is online, those that are around me, those that heard the warning through the prophets, that God, they must please, please do what God told you to do. God, the process is difficult, but you got to do it. God, right now, those that put a seed into the ground of this ministry, this ministry's ground is fertile. For miracle signs and wonders, follow it, because the spirit of unity dwells here. God, right now, send a supernatural, mind-blowing miracle to the house of those right now. God, even right now, those that are crying because they were disobedient, the grace and mercy shall follow them. God, let them say that they are sorry. God, those that were contrary to their mother, contrary to their father, contrary to their leaders, contrary to their husband, contrary to their wife. God, right now, let them have a heart of forgiveness and a heart of repentance. Because this is the season where you said it's time to gather, but they will not reap anything because of their hearts. God, we love the children of God. As leaders, we want them to get it right. We have seen the manifested evidence. It produces here, God. And it produces because of obedience and unity. Let them go to you today when they log off and say, God, we are sorry that we were disobedient. You told me what to do, and I didn't do it because of my own free will. God, I thank you, and I bless you, and I praise your name. Look upon the apostle Fred that gave the word of God. God, restore, refresh, and renew him. Every demonic force of retaliation, God, go before him, go before me. Lord God, even our children, divine influence, everyone under the sound of my voice. Now, God, as we come here next Sunday, we are believing, God, that the doors of the church will be open for everybody on the 10th of May. God, they're opening up Mecklenburg County on the 8th, which means that we can function, God, not as normal, but the new normal. Give them patience. Give them ability to be watchful and prayerful. God, shift characters, shift attitude. That manifested evidence will follow. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. And I will see you guys on Wednesday and Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you. God bless you.